in case you've forgotten how we got here, it's been a couple of weeks. These young ladies went 14 and 0 against ranked teams this year. At some point this year, they beat all the other teams that were number one seeds in the NCAA tournament. And all of the teams that were in this year's final four. And they beat one of those teams twice. Of course, they were SEC champions. Now they're national champions. Obviously, it wasn't easy. Everybody gave them their best game every night. But number one, wire to wire. That's how they started, that's how they finished, and that's why we're here. Thank all of you fans for supporting this team throughout the year and over the years. And thank you to all our Gamecock women's basketball alumni. A lot of them are down here. Thank you. <laughs> to get things rolling at this time, please welcome to the stage the City of Columbia Mayor, the Honorable Daniel J. Rickenman. Oh, with a chance. Of this side, Gang. That side, Cox. Gang. What a great day. Thank you all for coming out to celebrate the, these the women. I mean, look what they've done. What an incredible accomplishment. You heard 35 games. They broke nine records. You know, we had Aaliyah with the double doubles and the, and the rebounds, breaking records. Coach Staley, could you no, come up here for a minute? Know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, two-time National Coach of the Year! <laughs> so, we decided to celebrate in the city of Columbia, and we wanted to make sure that we proclaimed, you know, on, on April 3rd, they won this little thing called the National Championship. <laughs> And we talked about it. We said, well, you know, why, why should we just declare one day National Championship Day? So we just decided to declare the whole damn month, y'all. <laughs> so she can hang in her office with the key to the city, which will get her out of parking tickets. <laughs> so I just want to thank you and all the women in this basketball team, the band, the cheerleaders, the guys in the support. Y'all, hey, it's a team effort, and it was all of y'all. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And now, fans, please welcome U.S. Congressman James Clyburn. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Coach, don't go far. I want to do a couple of things here. In a few weeks, you all are going to be visiting your nation's capital, and you will be received at the White House. I believe the day up to you all to work out. And he made the commitment that he'll do it, and you all can decide when you want to come. Be sure not to schedule it on a day when Congress is not in session. <laughs> Please do it when I'm going to be there. But in the meantime, I want to present you with a couple of things, Coach. You know, the Coach is one of my road dogs. <laughs> we hang out together. Now, I want to give you this certificate and this flag. On the day of April 6th, in celebration of this victory, this flag flew over the Capitol, and I want you to have it. Now, one of the things I try to do in order to make accomplishments real memorable, it's not only congratulate you in person as I've done, but I can put in the congressional record 
On April 7th, this is the record of the proceedings of the United States Congress on April 7th. And in this record, all oh, where this little yellow tab is, each one of you get a copy, you will see a tribute to the Gamecocks with your names throughout it. So for the rest of the life. And each one of you will get a copy of the record to hang on your walls. Now, what I usually do during an election year, I used to put my picture right next to it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But congratulations. Not only did you win a national title, you won the hearts of the entire country. And you all Destiny. Oh. And she said, Destiny Henderson or Destiny Littleton? I said, no, 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 it's not that kind of date. It's a date that has been written, that has been predicted early in the season. It was a, a team that although they had the lowest average offensive scoring of recent NCAA women's champions, they also held their opponents to the lowest score in modern history. I, I want to tell you though, Congressman Clyburn said it right, these young women won the hearts and minds of people throughout America. They were and are America's team. What an amazing person. She has done more for gender equity, for equality in women's athletics than anybody in modern history. And it's the dawn of a new destiny, isn't it? I know well, she's going to say this, but I'll, I'll say it first. The fans, not the fans, uh, but the fans. <laughs> if you're a fan, raise your hand right now. And I'd like us to coin something new. There's another SEC team in football that claim they have a 12th man, and that would be the fans. But we, all of us together, male, female, whatever you go by, we are the sixth woman, all of us. In closing, I want to remind everybody that this is, I don't care what the newspapers say, this is the third national championship. We were in Dallas in 2017 when we beat Mississippi State, but I'll tell you, in 2020, we had only one loss all season. We were 16-0 in the SEC, and we were going to be crowned the national champions. Yep. And there are some teammates out there who came back to say hello today. We love you. We cherish you. That was the consensus national championship. This is the third one. We're going to keep going. How about we, Mayor, how about we keep this parade rude? Because we're going to need it again next year. <laughs> tell you as soon as women's basketball season starts we might not have the expensive seats but we're never leaving this team so go Gamecocks let's get the party started 
always a tough act to follow, but fortunately, our next guest knows a little something about winning national champions, national championships. <laughs> support and coaching staff, Assistant Coach Fred Schmeel, <laughs> Assistant Coach Joette Law, <laughs> Associate Head Coach Lisa Boyer, <laughs> and now your Gamecock student athletes, a freshman leaving? forward from Ellenwood, Georgia, number 20, Sanaya Fagan. <laughs> Freshman guard from Dayton, Ohio, number 23, Breezy Hall. Woo! A freshman guard from Atlanta, number 25, Raven Johnson. Woo! A freshman guard from Wilmington, North Carolina, number 44, Sanaya Rivers. Woo! A sophomore guard from Baltimore, Maryland, number two, Anaya Russell. Woo! A sophomore center from Brazil, Camilla Cardozo! A junior guard from Lexington, South Carolina. Number zero, Olivia Thompson. A junior guard from Toledo, Ohio. Number one, Zaya Cook. A junior forward from St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Number four, Aaliyah Boston. Junior guard from Rock Island, Illinois, number 12, Bree Beal. A junior forward from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, number 15, Leticia Amihir. Now I know she's not here, but let's make her hear us from Indiana. A senior guard from Fort Myers, Florida, number three, Number five, Victoria Saxton. A senior guard from San Diego, California. Number 11, Destiny Littleton. A senior forward from Charleston, South Carolina. Number 32, Alyssa Wesselick. And a graduate student from Durham, North Carolina. Number 24, Lily Brazette. And finally, your 2022 Gamecock women's basketball head coach, Dawn Staley. And now let's hear from a, a pretty special young lady, a fantastic student athlete, and an even better person, the SEC and consensus national and defensive player of the year, Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> great season without you guys. Um, we hear you guys every single night. We step on the floor to play a game, and I just want to say thank you. Go Cox! Yeah. Face it, she's going to be a Hall of Famer as a coach, right? Your SEC and National Coach of the Year, Don Staley. First 
of all, I know when we when we get together like this, you know, everybody wants to hear something that's so profound, <laughs> right? Here's the most profound thing I have to say. That is, the victory was won before it was played. You better speak. <laughs> Um, so often, so often that um, people that are in the position of our of our team, um, being the number one team in the country, um, being the number one team in the country at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, so often you don't finish the job. Um, and we couldn't finish the job without having the complete support from the very top. You know, our, our president, President Pestides, um, our interim president, um, President Emeritus. Hopefully I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm, I, gotta, I gotta practice that name a little bit. But I'll have it by July the 1st. <laughs> um, our mayor, our council, women and men, our general assembly, um, every single person that is um, of prestige really backed our program. They, they did, and we, we felt it from the very top um, all the way down to, you know, anybody that's walking um, these streets of Columbia, South Carolina, to ride down Main Street and to interact with you all, our, our fans, and they, they hear you, like they hear you scream from the bottom of your hearts how much you love us really resonates with me. It, it, it touches me. It, it really it touches me beyond like, I'm a Philly girl. Yeah. I don't get emotional, but you make me emotional. And I, I really appreciate it. Um, it it's, it's worth everything that we had to go through. I know we made it look easy, but it really wasn't easy. The sacrifice of, of all of our players um, all season long um, was was apparent to us, but probably not to you all. So I want to thank our players for, for, for the sacrifice. At the beginning of the season, we asked all of our players, all of our coaches, all of our, our highlighters, that's our male practice squad. <laughs> We asked them to make this year special. And when we said make it special, they didn't really understand what that meant. They didn't. Um, but it meant that some people will play a big role as far as getting out there and play, and some, someone will play a bigger role, because it's a bigger role not to play. Um, so the people that, that didn't play a whole lot, you know, your role was a lot bigger than you thought it was, um, because you didn't have to accept it, and you could have blown it up, and we could have not been in this position right here. Um, so I thank you for that. Um, and then lastly, I want to I thank you all, our fans. Like seriously, our fans. No one. No one. Like they, they, can, they can make up statistics and, and say we were the lowest scoring team in NCAA tournament history. They can say that. Okay, they can say they can say that we could held we held our opponents to the lowest points, you know, in the history of the NCAA tournament. Okay, here's what they can't say: that we don't have the best fans in the country. that in consideration. So before I, before I go though, here's how special our fans are. Um, <laughs> these are pretty cool. Um, there, there are two people on our team that really didn't get a whole lot of notor notoriety, um, but our fans thought that they should, they should be honored today. Um, those two, two players are Victoria Saxton.
Don't ever mistake her name. Her name is Bree. That's right. Bree Bill. <laughs> Big Body Benz. <laughs> the fans wanted, wanted us to recognize you because so often you, you, you give us so much of you and yet you're not often recognized in the public's eye. So on the biggest day of our season, which is the day and to share this moment with our fans, they wanted to say thank you for your contributions to our national championship. So I said that was the last thing. Here's the very last thing. Here's the very last thing. Let's run it back. Yeah.